when you told me about the like you think about me when you do the reading, <laughs> I actually have the same kind of experience. I think so. So whenever I read any kind of reading mm -hmm. about education, I think about your experience, <laughs> before that, and yeah. I was like, what the hell is that? How is this so fun? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I still remember when you told me that you don't want to, like, you you don't know if you want to be a teacher yeah, yeah. anymore if after you complete. But I think that was just things. like the second year where yeah where like the transitions period was a little bit harsh. It is hard. Yeah. yeah. So, and I mean, if you can pl blend in with your current one master class, then <coughs> I don't think there 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 should be a problem. No, I don't think there should be yeah. a problem. So, are, are we gonna comment on that? We are got we are talking about lentai. Yeah, 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 I do. Like you do think that it's discriminatory? Mm -hmm. Because, yeah. like I said, so I want to bring back to the point. We were talking about lentai, but then the memory is full, so I have to copy all of the videos in my laptop. Yeah, and, and we talk again. Yeah. So and wait, and then for those of you who don't know what the lentai is, it's pretty much um, a numeracy and literacy test that you have to take in order to become a qualified educator in Australia like it is the first step for you to actually doing your bachelor degree and knowing that you know by the end of your course you can apply to become like a teacher standardized test I think, <laughs> I think first because it's a standardized test uh -huh. it's not creative oh yeah so it's not creative and it's not for everyone so it do have one of the shortcomings of standardized um. tests it's really interesting. Should I say it's interesting because the fact that you you pass the Lantai um, test, it kind of signal to the to the Department of Education that um, you are among the top ten percent of the populations, and that's why you're qualified to be a teacher. We have to make that clear as well. Yeah. So if you pass the test, you know that I belong to that top ten percent. So ten percent, you're very smart people. <laughs> yeah. And I was the first batch to take the Lantai. Yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was the first batch to take the land tide. So that's why I'm wondering if it's getting harder as the year go by when you know you just have more feedback from from external party mm -hmm. about the paper. Mm -hmm. So I think it's still pretty new for mm. the Australian education system. Yeah. So I, I think they're still testing it. Look, this is the thing we have a multicultural city, country. And they are very proud of being a multicultural city, country mm. in the world, right? And they don't aware that bringing um, Australians, non-Australian students to the course, to the teachers' course, mm. is a benefit for them because uh. we're gonna bring our perspective, our different life experience, that we're gonna be benefit the society in the long term, mm. for the long run. But during the Lantai test, especially during the literary step, literacy test, they use the <coughs> Anglo mm. way of reasoning and way way of of, ways of reasoning, ways of understanding and readings. Mm. So imagine me if I didn't take the children literature subject in my bachelor degree, I wouldn't know what kind of reading I'm I'm, I'm reading right now. And then I was just like, okay, so this is this is the problems. We've been talking about that for months, for ages, in our course, in, in cultural diversity and identity course. But but what are you doing here in your education system? Every year you have thousands and thousands of people come from all around the world to Australia. Mm -hmm. But why do you want to teach them the Australian way of thinking? And what is the Australian way of thinking? And then you write, this is the white Australian way of thinking. It doesn't respect! <laughs> Can you sense that anger? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't respect our their migrants cultural diversity. Yeah. So and this is gonna affect the student in the long run. So if the students couldn't find themselves in the reading, how can they learn? Because they learned to make things relevant to themselves, mm. which is basic associations. Mm. So they try to make things so they try to make the connection between two things, between Australia and their life spirit. But when they look at the test book, mm. they only think about, they only see... They don't see themselves. They don't see themselves, they only see something... They see everything but not their culture. 
So they still try to assimilate mm. migrants, people from non English speaking country, non white, mm. to the Australian culture. And how can it benefit the country? You get yeah. That's why I said it's politics. It's, 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 it's getting politics. It's like a political, um, how do you call that? A political issues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> scary. Let's, let's talk about our uh, experience as a pre-service teacher. As a pre-service teacher, I went on I went on three, three rounds of placement already. Work, I was volunteering as a teacher assistant for for a year and a half, I think. And then, because during my actual placement, I was with a Japanese teacher and with a PE teacher, so it wasn't my specialization. So I volunteer as an EAL, and I really see the diversity of students that coming that come into the class. So you have students who who could be, you know, this semester coming in, and in the next semester they're gonna go, <laughs> yeah. And then, so what we did really in in um in our in the EAL class is just make sure that they really enjoy reading and learning. English, the language, mm. and I think I get a pretty cool um, mentor teacher. Like their EAL teachers, that's really good because she she is very um, caring and she is very creative in terms of um, her um, her way of teaching. So she will ask them to do different kind of things like, and then she brought in her items that you know features the Aboriginal culture mm. to teach the kid. Mm. So. I think all the kids, like the kids who go to that class, they really, really enjoy EAL. Mm. My other two round of placement is as um, two specialist school. Mm. So the, the first one is a special developmental school. So the the, the student there, they are their teenage years, so they are like twelve to fourteen. Mm -hmm. But then because they they have like um, a disability, an, an intellectual disability, that's why they they kind of. Uh, slower than their peers, but they no actually they are slower a lot because they they pretty much behave like like three years old, mm, mm. but then they are supposed to be like twelve and thirteen years mm. years old. Then I think it was at that school that I learned um, as a teacher, the most important thing is making sure that you create an environment that. Um, students feel motivated to go to school. Mm. Yeah, I was really surprised by my mental teacher because, you know, there's there's nothing much in terms of what they're learning. But then when I asked the teacher, like, um, what is your, your 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 purpose? You know, as or why do you choose to be in this setting? She was like, oh, my my purpose is just to make sure that they're motivated to come to school because. Um, at that age, a lot of the students, they actually do not want to come to school anymore because they have a really bad experience. They probably have a bad experience when they were in primary school. Mm. So that's why um, she, yeah, she just said that. And it's really shift my perspective because as a teacher, I keep thinking that, you know, oh, I'm going to teach this and I'm going to teach this skill. But then when she say that, you know, it's really bring down to the basics of how would you make sure that your student want to come to your class. Mm. Yeah, so mm. and 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 um so she she actually shed light on two things. The first one is that motivations and then the second one is the meaning of persistence. Cause like as an able uh, person we would expect a student to you know work hours and hours on like the same type of questions mm. for them to understand. For example if you don't know how to do math you just spend some practicing. But then for these kids, for them sitting down for five minutes, you know, using holding on to like a pencil is already persistent. Mm. So it's really you see every um, deep deep <laughs> definitions being bring down to like the very basic level. But I think that is what as educator we have to remember because mm. sometimes we will just rush our student through everything. Yeah. Yeah. To knowledge. Yep. Yeah. Love that. Mm. And that was so good, you know.